Yo. How close can we get to that? Tell me that doesn't look at look like that old ancient tech we just was looking at. Bro. Some type of mercury or steam. They were able to manipulate the free energy somehow. So they're manipulating the free energy they have been receiving. Man, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Bro, what is that girl holding? Did you see that? The Statue of Liberty. Someone in the comments said was the Statue of Liberty. One of those charging points, and I believe so. Man, we on to something now, y'all. What is she doing here? Guys, what is she doing? Look at this. A cord that's great. What is this? Could she be recording some type of message? Was this their way of, I don't even, I can't even begin. And look at my man, he's talking. It looks like they're somehow able to control the ether. How are they able to control this? And it looked like whatever is talking, like a hologram. like a hologram i think we're getting there y'all we're getting there a little bit more progress but more questions remain whoa there there they go moving fast again like always was this was this their way of a hologram Man, they showing them so quick. I'm trying to stop it. Some type of electricity producing some type of gas. It's, it's like an endless. It's pro whatever it's projecting is endless. It's not recycling itself. This looks like it's projecting the same gas somehow. Some type of hologram. On it, this one, it looks like it's projecting the same gas. Why does he have a wand though? Is this, it, this kind of looks like a robot with, you know, I don't know if those are supposed to be ears or what, but whatever he's communicating, this looks like a gas or smoke like a hologram and buddy has a wand you know what that reminds me of that um that episode on not the episode the movie on harry potter where he they took their tears and put it in that um puddle so they can see like their memories or something i don't know but he has a wand and it's kind of making me think about it a little bit with this gas so i don't know y'all this is this is very interesting 
Then they got this technology that's propelling. It's like, how, what type of energy was running this? Their, their transit system looked like a fair. It's your boy Jeski Chuck back with another creepy and scary TikTok that might just shift your reality and your paradigm. All that. This episode I'm excited to do because I love this topic, ancient tech. I am just fascinated in just what they were capable of, the free energy, how they were able to just use everything. It's just astounding just to see about the airships, see about the pillars, these fireplaces, man. These fireplaces, is this if this is your first time checking these videos out, I got a whole bunch you need to catch up on. Um, so it's like I'm getting to levels of these videos. Like you gotta watch my other ones just to know what I'm talking about on this one. So it's 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 exciting and interesting, and I just hope that everyone is following along. I highly recommend seeing my other videos if this is your first time watching me. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and also hit that bell and all notifications so you don't miss a video and you get notified as soon as I upload these boys and you're not late to the party. Nobody wants to be late, but some of you guys might like to be fashion fashionably late. I understand. You know, nothing against it. But again, let's get back on this ancient tech, y'all. Are you son? That doesn't look at look like that old ancient tech we just was looking at. Bro. Blue is beautiful, whatever color that is. Do y'all see this? Yo, what is that? Plasma? That look like plasma. A mercury arc. Re rectifier. A mercury arc rectifier. That's the key. Uh oh. We found the key. This is this could have been their internet. This could have been their source of TV. This could have been how they've been powering everything. This might be the key to harnessing the ether and storing it. For entertainment purposes only, don't come for me. This is a reaction. <laughs> yeah. Yo, is that the plasma? Yo, where are they? Bro, it's got no sound. They stumbled across this old arc reactor. Straight out of Tony Stark, y'all. Right in front of our faces. They always do this. This is the straight Star Wars holograms. This is the Tony Stark reactor. This is it. Free energy. Tony Stark in for real. Oh, it's, it's over. It's game over. Look at that. go look how beautiful that blue was looking look at that 
Man, imagine if this was powering your homes or your cars or our vehicles. We would never need to get gas again for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, let's go. What do y'all think about that? What was it called? The Mercury Art Rectifier. That's what we need to dive on, on these dark waters. Y'all, this is Dark Waters 9 for real. We are in deep. I'm lost in these waters, y'all. I'm gonna be honest, I'm lost. It's, and I'm gonna need these Mercury Art Reactors to get back to land, cause I'm out of juice. These dark waters is not producing any more light. So we need these mercury arc reactors to bust in and put these jet skis into overdrive. Let's go. Y'all thoughts below. Tell me what y'all think about this. Have y'all ever heard about this? A mercury arc reactor. They didn't tell us this once in science. And it's plasma? Oh man. The dots are starting to get connected, y'all. I'm not gonna hold you. This is gonna be a good episode. So I hope you can sit tight, you know, pause the video when you have to, take a break, come back, because we're diving in today. Holograms, free energy, reactors, we're diving in. If you haven't already hit that like and subscribe button and activate all notifications so you don't miss a video or you're not late to the party you're not watching the video i did five days ago because trust me four probably didn't drop since you didn't seen that video five days ago all notifications let's go jesky chuck baby out to my boy david walker for doing this video i'm gonna be giving y'all the credit to this in the comments I try to give credit as much as I can. This machinery. In the early part of the 20th century, electricity supplies were not generally available. What there was was usually generated by small companies, mostly for their own need, and then distributed in the immediate local area. As a result, there was no standardization of the type of electricity or the voltage companies generally chose to generate whatever was convenient for their own needs. That might be DC, it might be AC, it could be high voltage or medium voltage. And if it was AC, it this is This is for entertainment purposes only. Do your own research on everything. It could be at any frequency that the machinery they used generated. On this site, it was convenient to generate DC voltage because what they wanted it for was to power motors and lights and DC at that time was much easier when it came to motors and they so they chose to generate 200 volts DC. When the national grid was installed in the early 1930s this was AC voltage at around 4, 15 volts three phase to 40 volts single phase. Faced with the choice of either replacing all the machinery or to change the AC to DC, that was the simplest option. And the technology of the day was the mercury arc rectifier. Rectifiers work because they will only pass current in one direction. AC reverses current in, and continually. This is those things we kept seeing here. Let me put them over there that mercury arc rectifier this is what we've been seeing but different versions of it uh, in our case in the uk 50 times a second if you apply an ac voltage to a rectifier it will cut out the reversed half of the cycle 
And I believe people are finding these all over. Like those boys we seen that ran across that dusty one, they're they're hidden underground, you know, under the cities. They're saying some of them are still underground under the mud flood or however they're getting underground or abandoned places. People are finding them still working. So you get current that flows only in one direction. That is a form of DC. Mercury arc rectifiers were invented by a man called Peter Cooper Hewitt. He was the inventor of the mercury discharge lamp. He was trying to produce a light that was brighter than the currently available incandescent lamps. And he patented that in 1901, but realized that if you put AC across a mercury vapor lamp, it rectified into a form of DC. And from that, he developed the mercury arc rectifier. These contain a pool of mercury in the bottom of the bowl, which produces a vapor which fills the bowl. Around the periphery are the electrodes, the anodes, which collect the current. These rectifiers were made at the um, Hackbridge and Hewittick Company, which was actually based in Walton-on-Thames just a few miles from where we are in this building today. Now, to start a rectifier, you need an arc. And as it's a totally enclosed glass envelope, what you have is a spring wire from a small arm, which is just out of sight, which has an electromagnet under it. When we start the rectifier, the electromagnet pulls the wire into the mercury pool. That shorts the electromagnet out, which releases the wire and creates a spark, which is then picked up by two small anodes at the back to keep the arc flowing. What happens is when the spark is created, it ionizes the mercury vapor and makes it conductive. When we apply six phases around the main anodes and connect a load, the arc is picked up by each of the anodes and whichever of the anodes is positive at that one time, that's, what, that's the anode that conducts. So in fact the arc is passed around between the, the anodes successively, round and around and around. Of course this happens at um, a very rapid rate and so you can't actually see it rotating. But what you will see is the, where the arc touches the mercury at the bottom creates a very bright spark. And because it's, the arc is moving around, this spark darts about. We have a transform in the basement which converts and because it's, the arc is moving So those photos we seen of the ancient Tartarians, ancient tech, they were able to get faces in that somehow. So were they able to spray this? They found a way for to disperse it like a mist and to keep it in rotation. But how would they keep it generating through the mist? Was it absorbing the mist? Interesting. Huh? Your thoughts below. Let's keep it rolling. This is we got time today. But trust me, it gets way deeper. Moving around, this spark darts about. It always gets deeper. There's, there's no end, honestly. I've been lost on these waters. We have a transform in the basement, which converts these incoming three phase supplies to th six phases. But because it's rather large, you can't just connect it um, straight to the supply. So there's a starting sequence. Um, this takes about five seconds. So when I press the start button, there'll be a gap of about five seconds. The arc will be struck and picked up and you'll see um, it operating. At the same time, the cooling fans at the bottom of the cabinet will also start. So I'll now move over to the end of the cabinet and press the start button and the starting sequence is going through and immediately the, the rectifiers start.
Now you'll see that because the electricity is flowing through the mercury vapour, the mercury vapour glows this characteristic blue-green colour. The more current we pull through the arc, the brighter it becomes. And we can demonstrate that in, in just a moment. But to do so, I need to connect the rectifiers, these two rectifiers work in parallel, to the main DC switchboard. And we do this with the switch at the top here. That's now connected these rectifiers to that switchboard and you can see we're generating a voltage there. I shall now switch the... Now I'm no computer engineer but I do know we have a more upgraded system for a switchboard so if we could get this mercury arc rectifier in an updated version we would be on some Tony Stark type Iron Man type stuff for real. Look, I'm no computer engineer by any things, I, any means. I do have a forklift license that expires in 2026. But check this out. If we could get this going, look, look at these. Um, this is an old school circuit board. I know we got some switch boxes, some Cisco switch boxes that is newer than this. I did a little bit of computer networking and I can tell you that we can get an upgraded system with some gold running all through there. Thanks to y'all, I know gold is one of the best uh, conductors for electricity. Good looking, y'all. You know, it's, that's, it's the communication for entertainment purposes only. Y'all, get some, get some gold switches going on here. You know what I'm saying? It can't stop us. But this the gold, getting some gold switches and uh, giving the updated system could y'all just imagine we would be on some Tony Stark type stuff, y'all? Y'all imagine having a boat or plane or car ran off of a mercury arc reactor. We wouldn't be talking about, oh, how many horses you got. I say how many reactors you got in that thing, cuz. Come on, y'all. It's time to elevate. Rectifiers onto the main distribution buzz bars. There, we're now connected to the buzz bars and can connect any, lo any of the loads around the building using the individual switches here. Okay, I'm now going to switch on um, some power which will use the rectifiers and you'll see that as I switch it on, the glow in the bulb will become brighter. Firstly, I'll connect a load which is 20 amps you'll see the meter at the top um, read. 20 amps is fairly near the bottom of the meter, so it won't move it This is where deal. Tony Stark's the arc glow reactor has got came brighter, from. And all of the anodes are now in operation. And all of the anodes are now in at the top um, read. 20 amps is fairly near the bottom of the meter, so it won't move it a great deal. So that the glow has got much brighter and all of the anodes are now in operation. If I switch that off and connect a load which is 40 amps, you'll see that gets brighter again. And the meter is now reading 40 amps. And with the two together, um, that's as bright as we will go today. No, turn, turn it up. We got people watching. We, we can't go that. We got to go brighter. Guys, that was incredible. We are definitely on something with this ancient Tartarian tech. Could this be possibly how they're charging the airships, their homes, their vehicles and all that? Check this out. This creepy and scary TikTok that might make you rethink your reality is for entertainment purposes only. Come for me. Oh, they, 
Look how cool that looks, y'all. Imagine if we had one of those sprites from the upper atmosphere hitting one of these mercury arc reactors. Do you know how much energy we would get? Mercury arc rectifier. My fault, not the uh, reactor. Rectifier. I gotta, I gotta learn the difference. What is the difference between rectifier and reactor? I thought I'll get an automatic answer for that, but not today. Normally when you ask a question, you know, she'll talk her, she'll start yapping. But nah, she said, nah, you got to do a little bit more research for that. You, we ain't got that answer. Definition for rectifier. Here's the definition of rectifier. An electrical device which converts an alternating current into a direct one by allowing a current to flow through it in one direction only. So it only flows in one direction. Definition of reactor. Here's the definition of reactor. An apparatus or structure in which fissile material can be made to undergo a controlled, self-sustaining nuclear reaction with the consequent release of energy. Can a reactor be non-nuclear? According to fact sheets about INL, Idaho National Laboratory, the DOE Microreactor Program is developing a thermal hydraulic test capability called the Microreactor Agile Non-Nuclear Experimental Test Bed. What is this? It's a PDF fact sheet I gotta download. They're just using heated air, basically. So from these blueprints from uh, micro dough, micro reactor program, I'm looking at their blueprints and I'm reverse engineering the blueprints. And I have discovered that they're using heat. They are using heat. compressed heat to make self-sustaining energy but if we think about it we wouldn't need a reactor if we already have the ether so all we would need to do is channel the ether through the rectifier so that's the question is how do we channel the ether through the rectifier so we're not trying to make a reactor like tony stark we just need to tap into the ether y'all damn lean not on your own understanding Oh yeah, it's time y'all, it's time, it's time to evolve.
Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to evolve. The people are waking up. It is time to evolve. Time to turn up. Time to get some real progress done around this. <laughs> Huge shout out to Photonic Duction for this video. Uh, I'm going to put his good. link to this full video in the comments. Try to give credit when I can. Shut it down, Look, he's connected to car batteries to get this. We're trying to Jason. get connected to the ether. And off. And while I'm on top of this ether dome, now that I think about it, I think I've been seeing somewhere that water records memory. What if the ether has memory, just like the avatar strings in the tree forest? If the ether has memory, this could be something completely different than we ever thought of. It could have been internet for the world back in the time if the ether was able to record memory. Think about it for a sec. We really don't know why. Maybe if the ether is made up out of everything and if the water is made up out of ether, I don't know. This is just an idea I'm just throwing out there. But if there's some way it can record or give communication, the ether could, this could change the game for the internet on how they had internet back in the day. Because they had cell phones back then. I'm gonna show you after this, but I want to set it off. Bottom there is the exciter. And we get that to dip in the mercury. There's a little magnetic thing there. Normally a solenoid goes on that, but if I put this magnet on it, that will pull that into the mercury, like this, look. And that sets it off. So that's what gets a few what mercury atoms flying around. My fault, y'all. I try not to interrupt them, but we know what happens when you spin them boys at the bottom. Don't worry, it was... Later. It's a, it's a long video, y'all. Bear with me. We got a lot to cover. For entertainment purposes only, do your own research. Obviously, now we'll start conducting on these anodes. Yeah. Normally, a solenoid goes on that. But if I put this magnet on it, that will pull that into the mercury. Like this, look. And that sets it off. So that's what gets a few mercury atoms flying around. And once that happens, obviously now we'll start conducting on these anodes back to the transformer. So to start it, it's quite straightforward. 240 volts, 38 volts, something like that, 30, 38, into a rectifier, through these resistors, through this choke, which gives a nice kickback. And that's all what runs it. That's my phone, I apologise. So, I'm plugging this circuit in. I love the accent. Now, we're going to no start proper. it. Excitation. Now, main power from this lot. There we go. Excitation off. Outstanding. How come we weren't taught this at all? I wonder. That's the transformer there making some noise. So, the power supply side is all this nonsense. As I say, it's an 11 kV split phase transformer, which the national grid would normally use, but it's handy, because it's split phase. That down the bottom is the output. 
And if this was a Tartarian, instead of having all this uh, connected, they would probably be running this to their chimney and their chimney or their fireplace. They probably would have these wires connected to their fireplace and into their on top of their fireplace. They'll probably have an antenna that probably if it got struck, you know, would probably even charge it even more. That's why it's higher up in the air. So struck by um lightning, you know, it'll probably be high up in the air. So it'll even charge it even more. It's that free energy. I remember if that's what homeboy was trying to do when he had that kite. Who knows? You know, but I just know that uh if they're able to get that ether up from that ionosphere and they're using this to charge it you would all you would need is a rectifier they'll be like a reactor who needs a reactor and we got all this ether the most high gave us these two would be the anodes going in primary of this transformer is only being fed by this one it was 100 amps so we're part of transformers sounds nice though doesn't this it this is a 50 year old mercury reactor by my boy uh photo but more importantly photonic duction doesn't that look nice yeah it looks nice photonic duction thank you for all your hard work I'm gonna have um I'm gonna put this video link in the comments. I could Check watch them that out. All day. Like and subscribe. Than TV, I did. You gotta be mad to have one of these in your living room. Don't get many shots like that. Normally these things are all behind a screen and you can't even get close to it. There's me touching it. A giant plasma ball. Hey, we seen what the little girl was doing earlier. Don't try it at home, but hey. Hey, we seen what that girl was doing on the it's earlier good. photo. Might be better when the light's off though, really. That's the transformer rattling. then. It's a bit of magnetic field over there. That's Yo, again, that was by Photonic Duction. Um, I just became a huge fan. Um, put credit in the um, comments. And uh, yeah, what did you guys think about that? You guys let me know what you think about it in the comments below. It shed makes that ether look a little bit more real. And again, I'm over here like, man, how do we get this reactor? This Tony Stark reactor. Well, reactor means it's some type of self-propelling mechanism. Rectifier means it's just taking the energy. So why would we even need a reactor when we just get in a rectifier tapping into unlimited energy? And I believe our ancestors knew that. So let's continue diving into these waters. Dang, I feel like we this progress. We doing jumps today. We speeding in these dark waters today, y'all. Hit that bell so we get all notifications and like and sub with your boy.
Tap in early, y'all. Let's go. What is he doing? Red Mercury. Then how does it turn silver? Levitation technology? You mean they could levitate? By rapidly vibrating? Those look like the scoot. I just was about to say, those look like the scooters that they have around town already. They've been doing that for years already. We just now, my town doesn't even have those yet. How was they doing this? How was they extracting the ether from the rectifiers to get these boys pumping? Look, this is real. This is all your boy Tesla did.
That was fascinating. I have no idea what, you know, that could be some type of steam propelled vehicle. If we can get it, the engine working right. It's just all you needed was heat. Man, this is so fascinating. It's time to put all the pieces together and see what's really going on. Hey guys, huge shout out to Paul Cook for making these videos. If you guys haven't checked him out, go check him out. I seen just came across this video and I was like, hey, I got to do a live reaction to this video because it is going directly what we're talking about. If you, I highly recommend you go give him a uh, check him out. Um, I'm a huge fan. Um, I just became one. I'm going to put uh, the link to this video in his Patreon in the comments below. Yeah, check this out. Popping up from the early you know early 1900s like we went through all this a year and a half ago so we know all this but one thing i've noticed after going over these pictures again is a little device that i keep seeing lit up everywhere which is the mercury arc rectifier that's right mercury now i'm going to go through its its role in the secret underground tube system which we call the mail rail its role on the london underground and also its role in charging electric cars that are over 120 years old, just like this. So let's, let's get stuck into it properly, shall we? The history of the electric car, it all started in 1832. The very first car was an electric car and it was not a pattern motor car designed by Carl Benz. A short cultural history. Right, so the history of the electric car started with British inventor Robert Anderson. He built his electric powered vehicle in Aberdeen, a port city in North East Scotland between 1832 and 1839. He had once presented it in an industrial exhibition in 1835. The car could travel around 12 kilometers per hour. It was a bit cumbersome to the steer, but the drive unit was almost as quiet as the powertrain in the new Tesla. This pioneer in automotive history used a disposable battery for this vehicle and crude oil was used to generate the electricity. This is how Anderson managed to get his electric car on the road long before the famous three-wheeled gas-powered Benz Patton motor car in 1886. It stands as proof that cars did not run on gasoline from the beginning. It also goes to say here that in 1881, there was a guy, some French guy, and he built a, a electrical trike. But the thing, the problem I have with this is, he says it run on batteries, lead batteries, but batteries can't store alternating current. They can only run on direct current, right? So I don't know how they got this, because it's literally, the year after that is when they said, they made the first power station for the public, which was the Holborn Viaduct. And that generated alternating current. So if you're getting alternating current from the power station to your house, how are you converting it into direct current? Let's examine these old photos, shall we? These, these photos that are over 100 years old are, are better than some of the pictures from the 1960s. I digress. Anyway, cables coming out of this wooden structure, charging up the back of this electric car now, this was the early 1900s that's 110 years old or 115 years old same with this one and same with this one now if you look at the little charge it this one looked like it had no steering wheel maybe they were messing around with photoshop back then as well who knows eh? but the point is this device on the right hand side here this is what housed the mercury arc rectifier here you go. See behind it is where it hid. So we're going to have a look at how these things worked and how they changed or they rectified alternating current into direct current. And I think it's incredible how they could do this back in the day. You know, this seems like a, an advanced bit of machinery, but it's old world tech. Very strange. Here we go. Look, Mercury Arc Rectifier Charging Set. So this was a charging set for the electric cars run and look 156 miles on one charge this is 120 years ago what happened eh? and here we go the mercury arc rectifier 
Bro, this is so huge. Shout out to Paul Cook for discovering this and breaking all this down. Oh my goodness. They had 150 miles per charge. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's I'm going to try to zoom in on that when I edit this video. But when you zoom, if you can see that, it say 100. He just said 150 miles per charge. And here's the arc reactor right there. The rectifier, I mean. The rectifier right there. So are they slapping these boys in? Let's, let's, see, what, let's see what my boy Paul got to say, man. And I am a huge fan now. Now, I actually found one of these in Malta, and I'll show you the footage of it later. And I nicked 770 grams of mercury out of it. I'll show you all later anyway. Let's go. If you could stay with me for a minute, I promise you I won't bore you. A mercury arc valve or mercury vapor rectifier is a type of electrical rectifier used for converting high voltage or high current alternating current AC into direct current DC. It is a type of cold cathode gas filled tube but is unusual in that the cathode instead of being solid is made from a pool of liquid mercury and is therefore self restoring. As a result mercury arc valves were much more rugged and long lasting and could carry much more high currents than most other types of gas discharge tubes. See this is where it gets a bit booky. Invented in 1902 by Peter Hewitt Mercury arc rectifiers were used to provide power for industrial motors, electrical railways, streetcars and electric locomotives, as well as radios, transmitters and high voltage direct current. Now the problem lies with me is if they were invented in 1902, how were all these other things, be, how was these electric cars being charged up? How was in the 1880s the, the London Underground and the mail rail converting the power if they had to use direct current and, and the only power station was generating was alternating current. How were they doing that? See, I think that's a mix up there and they've, I've caught them out lying. But how do these work then? The operation of the rectifier relies on an electrical arc discharge between the electrodes in a sealed envelope containing mercury vapor at a very low pressure. A pool of liquid mercury acts as a self-renewing cathode that does not deteriorate with time. The mercury emits electrons freely Whereas the carbon anodes emit very few electrons when heated. So if he's saying that's how the electrons are getting emitted freely, maybe that's how they're able to use these rectifiers to get these faces in there. That's we, I'm seeing how these th their vehicles are kind of moving now, but that's still not explaining how we're seeing these faces pop up in these rectifiers this we're getting close though i feel it so the current of electrons can pass through the tube in one direction from the cathode to the anode which allows the tube to rectify alternating current when an arc is formed electrons are emitted from the surface of the pool causing ionization of mercury vapor along the path towards the anodes. The mercury ions are attracted towards the cathode and the resulting ions bombarded with the pool maintains the temperature of the emission spot so long as the cathode Vapor. That's, that's the secret. Mercury vapor, y'all. current of a few amperes continues so there you go early 1900s 120 years ago they were using mercury to rectify to convert ac to dc now what else were they using mercury for back then i mean look at this device look at it this looks like some real old world tech and don't get me wrong well do get me wrong i don't believe these were invented when they said I reckon they're around a lot earlier than that. And I believe that mercury has a massive part in free energy. And that's why we don't hear of mercury. That's why we're told it's so dangerous and poisonous. Don't go near it. All that jazz. But it's like anything. Do a bit of research and common sense. You'll be all right. But look at them. Look absolutely beautiful there. Now, like I said, I actually found 
two of these in Malta in an old theatre. It used to be an old discotheque and it converted it into, sorry, it used to be a theatre then it converted into a disco. But then what happened is the disco shut down, but they never, they kept, they left the top floor alone. So on the top floor was the cinema. They had all the electrical stuff up there, stuff like this. They had the mercury arc rectifiers. They even had reels from the 1950s. And I'm going to show you all that in a minute. But have a look at these. These are the mercury arc rectifiers. They're everywhere. And I Man, that story of Frankenstein's making a little bit more sense, ain't it? What if he was using a mercury rectifier on some evil doer stuff on a real person man that would be scary trying to use a mercury re rectifier on someone that's you know expired this might be some alchemy slash uh what's that word i'm looking for uh you can pick the class on diablo um diablo for the uh necromancer Trying to put that plasma all up in them. Oh my goodness. This is scary. Wow. This is darkness nine waters for real. And I can see them everywhere now. And I've been looking at these pictures for almost two years and I never noticed. And it's funny how you progress and you learn yourself as you get better and wiser. Wise up, eh? And again, just here, just on the like left-hand side, too. you can actually see, when you follow the cable round, the Mercury Arc rectifier lit up, doing its ting. So the power comes in AC, that, that converts it to DC, which allows you to charge up the appliance, in this case, the electric car, 120 years ago. What happened? What happened? Oh, I can tell you what it was. Petrol. They wanted you to pay for petrol and fuel and things like that. That's what, that's what happened. Um, you know the script. I don't need to talk about that. You know the script. We all know the script. This is a commercial world. Everything is done to sell it to us. That's the job of the government. It's to take our money and give it to private companies. But never mind, never mind, never mind. So yeah, back to the rectifiers, eh? Or a piece of tech. Now, I was actually going to go to the mail rail this week to, uh, to, to to do a tour there. And apparently they've got a working Mercury Arc rectifier there. So I will be going there probably in the next couple of weeks. Probably. But this is what, so they've changed. So it used to be that, but now what they've brought out is they brought out these rectifiers. Now the Mercury Arc rectifiers, they got replaced in the 70s. And what they did was they replaced it with these little gadgets. These are rectifiers. So you've got the AC currents going in, in the center. And then you've got the direct coming, currents coming out on the, uh, on the outside ones. So it's sort of like a little transformer as well, you know? Now I wanna know is what happened to all that mercury like I said, I've got 770 grams exactly out of one Mercury Arc rectifier. There must have been millions. For instance, how many people had electric cars in the, in the, in, in the early 1900s? So many people, millions of people. So that, there, there'd have been millions of Mercury Arc rectifiers, plus the ones used on the tubes, plus the ones used on the mail rail. Like, where is all this Mercury gone? And Where like I said, the little mini from? underground railway for the mail in London. Let's have a look. I was exploring an archive today, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what it says. It's called a mercury arc rectifier. It's a large glass bulb and at the bottom is a puddle of liquid mercury. And it really does glow bright blue when switched on. There were several mercury arc rectifiers in the mail rail. They played a vital role powering the railway from 1959 to 1980s and again I believe they're playing with dates again because when did the power with the mail rail come out that come out years ago so what power was that using before the mercury arc rectifiers come along it was using alternating current but how did it convert it and it's just a load of cobblers it's all a load of cobblers history is a lie it is a complete lie 
and again. Let's have a look at London Underground. I'll just just while we're talking about London Underground, see this is a mod. This is the most modern map of the London Underground in 2022, and this is like in 1878. Look how many tunnels there is, and look how many times it passes the Thames. It goes over the Thames 13 times. Like, who dug all this out? There was no power back then. Is this all done, dug out by hand? Look at Clapham Junction. Thriving, mate. Absolutely thriving. And this is 1878 or 1888. It's, it's, it's basically 130, 140 years ago. Yet the whole place is bored out. Nothing's changed. What, so they dug all this out in a matter of 10, 15 years? Was the whole of London a building site? No. These, these tunnels are ancient. They've been going on for ages. Every city in the world. I wouldn't be surprised if the, the um, Statue of Liberty was one as well. Yeah, here's the phones they were using. Unbelievable. today's episode if you made it this far drop the 1000 in the comments so i know you real man it was a long one for these longer ones i need the 1000s in the comments man uh rectifiers mercury rectifiers man that is interesting man this is my first time hearing about it and i am fascinated a lot of good information that came through oh, man if drop the like uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell and click all so you can be notified on all these boys and you don't miss nothing. Go ahead and knock that out right now because I'm telling you, I'm bringing daily heat. It's I have so much stuff. You know, this video was so long because it was just so much I had to talk about. And my next video, I got a lot to talk about. I got ideas for days. My bag is deep. I don't miss. Do not lean on your own understanding. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Mercury rectifier. Man, it's your boy Jesky Chuck, man. I'm out. Peace. Creepy and scary TikTok that might just make you rethink your reality for real.